Episode 6 of Star Trek Lower Decks has been down for us with a brand new adventure with the Star Trek universe. References, plot lines, and angry aliens. Yep, it's a Lower Decks episode. Hello everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Trek Central. Today we're talking about Star Trek Lower Decks Episode 6, which is called Terminal Provocations. It's written by John Cochran and directed by Bob Suarez. The episode's plot revolves around a newly introduced Ensign Fletcher, who isn't the easiest to work with, along with Ensign's tending Rutherford taking a holodeck program going wrong. Captain Freeman is also dealing with some aliens and salvage, so about a typical week in Star Trek I'd say. Of course, before we do jump into today's review and breakdown of episode 6, if you're new around here and want to keep up to date with all things Star Trek, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video. You can also follow us on social media for daily posts from the Star Trek universe. And of course, don't forget, this review and breakdown will contain spoilers for episode 6 and of course Lower Decks Season 1. You have been warned. Alright, let's jump into this. Now this week's cold open to the episode was interesting to say the least. It features our ensigns humming the warp engine sounds of iconic starships. Yeah. Boimler is making the reference of the Enterprise D at Warp 4, which of course is Captain Picard's iconic Enterprise. Now Commander Jack Ransom, the first officer, actually arrives and thinks something weird has happened to the four ensigns, which let's be honest, uh, it, it does look rather strange. Rolling into the main episode after the title sequence, the USS Cerritos is dealing with a salvage dispute between an alien species and of course themselves. Now Lieutenant Shax, the tactical officer, is suggesting that the captain immediately fires on the aliens, but is denied as per usual. That running theme with Shax is back once again. Little fun thing I did notice, the alien captain who is claiming salvage rights is actually voiced by actor J.G. Hertzler, who is famous for playing with Klingon General Martok in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. The scenes of a bridge crew are always interesting to me, with Captain Freeman doing things the correct way, sort of, as she activates the tractor beam causing a tug of war between the alien starship and the Cerritos. Shrax has still wanted to open fire but instead is going to yellow alert and denied the right of actually firing again. It always reminds me of that clip on YouTube of Worf constantly getting denied by Captain Picard. I swear I've mentioned this sometime before. Maybe Mike McCann has seen that himself and thought, yes, this is what we need to do in Lower Decks. Constantly deny the tactical officer of ever firing at anything. Even when things go badly with the aliens starting to throw salvage at the Sweetos, Captain Freeman is still wanting to deal with the situation ethically and diplomatically. I think this is almost a little joke for how Starfleet is always the better person really, even when other people are being jerks and could clearly be put down a peg or two. Shax is constantly denied with him even saying, oh come on, after being denied yet again, for wanting to fire weapons at the aliens, which of course would start a war. Not exactly the best outcome here. Now the Lower Decks mission this week almost seems like the secondary objective, but of course it's our main one. I'm not sure why, but I personally found Captain Freeman's mission more interesting than the other objective, which is dealing with a rampant power core and also escaping a rogue holodeck program. We're also introduced to a new ensign for this episode, Ensign Fletcher, voiced by Tim Robinson, who's a bit of a hot-headed jerk to put it lightly. He's first introduced as super helpful and friendly to Ensign's Boimler and Mariner, but it does take a turn for the worse when it reveals that he lied about being beaten up by the Delta Shift workers, then the aliens, to kind of avoid owning up for breaking the work component that he was actually using. What's kind of funny is the Delta Shift ensigns are almost like a mirror of our four ensigns. I expect this is done on purpose, it does almost remind me of that robot chicken short with the night crew from Star Trek The Next Generation. Though it does answer the question of who does all the work while our main characters are sleeping in the Trek universe. Another mystery solved it seems. I mean we kind of knew the answer already but still, I'll, I'll take it. Before I do forget to mention, we are also introduced to Ensign Fletcher in the Suito's mess hall, as Mariner accidentally falls into Dr. Nana and covers her in nachos. Words are thrown and a heated exchange grows, to which Tanana suggests that Mariner transfer to Starbase 80, if she just wants to goof around the whole time. Starbase 80 is actually a starbase within the Trek universe, but from my quick look at memory beta and alpha, not much has actually happened here. Now Starbase 80 kind of seems a bit of a sly dig in this episode, like oh you should go there because you're clearly bad at your job, but uh, I'm not sure why, maybe Starbase 80 is known for being a bit reckless or a bit off the cuff? Who knows, maybe we'll explore that at a later date. The holodeck sequence with Ensign Rutherford and Ensign Tendi was interesting, but really did not capture my attention that much. The whole routine of a program going wrong and trying to kill them, along with the safety protocols being deactivated while they're in the holodeck, is rather cliche in my opinion. It's something we've seen and experienced in Star Trek many times now. I guess if you're a new viewer to Star Trek Lower Decks, then you might find it interesting. Personally, it just does not capture my attention that much, and I find myself wondering what's actually going on with the bridge crew and the rather rude aliens. Though I will admit, 
Badgie, Rutherford's little helper program, was kind of funny, as it just reminded me of Clippy, the old Windows helper extension, which I think was on Windows XP or Windows 98. I can't remember for sure, maybe one of you guys will let me know in the video description below. I mean, I grew up with Vista and Windows 7, which tells you how old I am. The situation with a missing core going rogue as Fletcher stuck his head in it was kind of funny to me, as it just seems like a dumb human thing to do. What do we do with things we don't really 100% understand? We stick our head or hand in it. Kind of brings me back to you, you should never stick your head in an oven. This is exactly what Fletcher does, and of course the core goes mental as soon as Boimler and Mariner find it. It's at this point Fletcher's revealed to be a bit of an ass as he plans to land our lovable Ensigns in trouble if they don't help him contain the situation. Of course Mariner, surprisingly, and Boimler want to do the right thing and report the situation to the bridge to contain it, as he's starting to mess with everything else. But Fletcher kind of blackmails him into helping him and covering it up so he doesn't get in trouble or fired from Starfleet. The core outbreak on the lower decks is now having an effect on the bridge crew mission as shields are starting to fail while salvage is being thrown at them by the aliens. The moment that really made me laugh this episode was Captain Freeman's attempt to resolve the situation with the aliens. With the alien captain just responding with <laughs> and closing the channel. We can talk this out, <laughs> you. It's of course censored like I just did there to avoid the YouTube thing, but come on, how many times a species or even a captain wanted to say that to someone in the Trek universe? I wonder if I could make a meme edit replacing Star Trek Captain Lines with Gordon Ramsay's quotes from Hell's Kitchen. If you'll excuse me, I'll be off for a few days experimenting with that, as it does sound hilarious in my opinion. Mariner and Boimler's idea of dragging the rampant core to the transporter room does not go to plan, because why would it? This is Star Trek Lower Decks. They end up pushing the thing out of the Cerritos airlock, which does cause it to crash into the alien starship and blow them up in the process. All the bridge crew are preparing to evacuate after shields fail and weapons go offline. I do love Boimler's line, we're so getting fired for this. Shax's celebration on the bridge, not knowing how he did it, and then kissing Dots Nana was an interesting sight for sure. I'm not sure if we're putting these two characters together, but I'm all for it. The Doctor and Security Chief, so an interesting mix if you ask me. Can't wait for the wedding. Resolving the crisis is one thing, but the crew owning up to what happened is another thing as well. Commander Ransom comes down to the lower decks demanding answers, but instead Maron ends up putting Fletcher forward for promotion, as that's her idea of punishment, which of course we explored in an earlier episode this season. Now what I find really cool is Ensign Fletcher is promoted lieutenant and assigned to the starship USS Titan, which is of course under the command of Captain William T. Riker, revealed to us in the movie Star Trek Nemesis when he departed the Enterprise E to take command of her. Oh boy, if we got a look at the Titan and it finally made itself into canon, the lunar class that is, it would make the series of lower decks for me. The Titan is one of my favourite starships in the extended Star Trek universe, with Riker being a favourite character of mine. So seeing him and the ship in lower decks would be a dream come true. Well, I can dream at least. I mean, come on, Mike McCann, please, g give me the Titan, come on! Though at the end of this episode, it's revealed that Fletcher was in fact fired and demoted on the Titan for emptying the trash into the warp core, only six days later. I can sort of imagine Riker's face when that happened, and if you want to learn more about the USS Titan and her crew from the extended Star Trek canon lore, you can check out our full video right here on the channel. So giving my final thoughts on Star Trek Lower Decks Episode 6, it was an alright episode. Not the best out of all 6 in my opinion, but it was an enjoyable watch at the end of the day. As mentioned before, I personally found the bridge crew's objective, which was a secondary plot point, a lot more interesting than our hero characters were getting up to on the ship. Don't get me wrong, while cliche as hell, the holodeck program going rogue was interesting for a moment, but it's something we've explored and experienced in Star Trek many times now. The episode even makes reference to holodeck programs going wrong as well, with Rutherford mentioning multiple holodeck stories that are of course references to previous adventures in Star Trek, even the whole Sherlock Holmes thing. Now having J.G. Hertzler cameo as a guest voice actor for the alien captain was fantastic. It adds more Legacy Trek references and cameos to lower decks of course. Of course, we learned from Star Trek Day earlier this week that creator Mike McGann is excited to bring the character of Q, voiced by John Delancey, to Lower Decks later this season. I think it's next week, actually. That's actually really interesting for me, as this episode foreshadows the appearance of Q. The Ensigns make multiple references to blaming weird events on a Q, as no one really knows the Q really do or what they get up to at the end of the day. A perfect disguise for anything going weird on a Federation starship, if you ask me. I wonder if this will happen next week and Q will appear and say it's not him. Either way, I look forward to having John Delancey back in Star Trek once again. Kinda makes me think what other legacy Trek characters will get. I mean, they're not exactly gonna spoil the season final, but uh, hey, you know the Titan, you know, or Picard, you know, either way, I'm a happy man. 
That of course wraps up our weekly review and breakdown of Star Trek Lower Decks latest episode. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from a team here at Trek Central. We've just covered the Star Trek Discovery Season 3 trailer and we'll be talking more about the roundup of Star Trek Day tomorrow here on the channel. Of course, if you want to tune into our weekly live streams discussing Star Trek Lower Decks and anything that's happened in the Star Trek universe this week, then you can tune into those at 9pm BST on Sundays here on the Trek Central YouTube channel. Keep an eye on our social media for a link for where you can sign up and watch it and set a reminder so you never miss the live stream. For now, I've been Captain Jack. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper, my friends.